Would you believe me if I tell you that you're going to finally understand generators in less than two minutes? Let's try it out. Say I give you the following task. Write on a whiteboard all even integers between 0 and 100. For that, I give you a piece of paper and provide you with two options. I can either write down all even integers between 0 and 100 on this piece of paper, and all you'll have to do is look up each value and write it on the whiteboard one after the other. Or option number two is to simply write down the start value, which is 0, and the ending value 100, and simply tell you how you could by yourself generate all the values in between. So basically, teaching you that in order to go from one even number to the next one you simply have to add two which option would you prefer most of you would probably choose option two right i mean option one looks like too much work for this task it would be much more efficient to just generate the sequence on the fly rather than writing down the whole sequence then looking down at the paper to get each individual value plus by going with option two it leaves out the majority of your paper empty and you could use this available space to store data for some other tasks you need to perform well congratulations you now understand the concept of generators in Python, or more precisely, the concept that generators make it much easier and cleaner to implement. The whole idea is as follows. If it is possible to programmatically define a way that generates one element at a time, then why don't we do that instead of computing and storing all elements of a sequence in memory? The main advantage of that, well, look at the paper I gave you earlier and imagine that this is the memory or RAM of your machine. By choosing option 2, which is basically what a generator does you'll be able to save so much memory actually the larger your data is the more memory you'll be saving by switching to generators now that the motivation behind generators is clear for you let's jump right ahead and implement our first generator in python actually let's implement the generator i mentioned in the previous example first off generators are actually functions in python so we will write down def generator then we'll start writing our logic let's initialize our value to zero then we want to keep on generating values as long as we don't exceed the value 100. now what do we want to do with our value here well we want to yield it this keyword is the reason why python will recognize this as a generator what does it mean we'll see in a second then to generate the next elements it's as simple as incrementing this value by two and done let's try it out We'll set gen equal to generator, then we'll loop over this variable gen, so for x in gen, and print out each x. And running this code, we can see how all even integers between 0 and 100 are successfully printed out. Now, let's go back to this crucial line right here. Why did we use a keyword called yield? What's the difference between yield and using return, for instance? Well, let's try that. If we substitute this yield with a return keyword and run this code again, well, we get a type error. The error states that int object is not iterable, hinting that our variable gen that we're trying to loop over isn't an iterable. It isn't a sequence of elements. It's just an integer. Why is that? Well, it's because whenever Python encounters a return statement within a function, this marks the end of the execution of this function. So Python will leave this function's code deleting whatever local variables computed during the execution of this code and return this value to its caller. So gen will simply contain the integer value 0. If, for example, we were to call this function again in our code, Python would restart the execution of this code from scratch, redefining value to zero, then returning it. All of this means that we will never be able to reach this line in our execution, right? We won't be able to properly resume our code and generate the following value. This function will simply return a single integer and not at all a sequence of values, which is what we were aiming for. That's where the yield keyword comes into play a very powerful keyword that will change everything in our code yield does many things the first of which is letting python know that here we're writing a generator and not just a function meaning that when we set gen equal to generator gen will not contain whatever this function returns it will actually contain a generator object something that will generate values when it is asked to do so so how do we ask for values from this generator well, this is technically done by calling the next function on our generator. So here, if we print next of gen three times, we can see the values 0, 2, and 4 generated and printed out. 
That being said, a more common way to grab the values of a generator is to simply loop over it. At each iteration, we would be asking for the next value to be provided to us. Let's take a moment to really understand how this works and see the power of the yield keyword come into play. The first time we request a value from the generator, Python will go into this code, start executing it until it reaches a yield statement. Once it does, this value will be returned. In this case, the value 0 is returned. Then, whatever code present inside of our for loop will execute. Now, the next time we request a value from this generator, and instead of re-executing this code from scratch like in a normal function, the code will actually resume its execution from where it left last time until another yield statement is encountered so here we'll resume by incrementing the value by 2 which will now have the value 2 verify that this condition is true then return the value 2 then the next time value will once again be incremented to become 4 which is still less than 100 and will be returned this will keep on going until all code is exhausted and there are no more yields to execute and that's how we are able to generate very large sequences of data one element at a time without ever storing the full sequence in memory. Isn't that just awesome? To better understand the usefulness of generators and to understand why in my previous video on list comprehension, I mentioned that generators are one of the most beloved features in Python, let me walk you through an example where generators would be awesome to utilize. Say we have a very large file, like this file containing 1 million lines and we would like to read these lines and process them. Let's compare two ways of doing that. We'll define a function process lines. Let's start by getting the lines from the file using a function called getLines, which takes as input the file's path, opens the file in read mode, reads the lines, and returns a list containing the lines and the file, which is exactly what we need. Then, resuming our code here, we'll simply loop over the lines and simply count them for the sake of demonstration, but of course you could process these lines however suitable in your use case. Running this code all works fine and we can see the value 1 million printed representing the count of the lines. Now let's rerun the same code, but this time we will add the profile decorator to our function, which will give us a really cool profiling of the memory usage after each line of our code. Here we can see that reading all the lines from our file added approximately 127 megabytes to our memory consumption. Now let's compare that to using generators. We'll create a second function, getLinesGenerator, which will also take as input the file's path, but this time, instead of reading all the lines of the file in one go, we'll simply read from the file one line at a time and yield that. Let's run this code now, wait a second for it to complete, and here you go, we went from consuming 127 megabytes to literally consuming 0 megabytes on this line of code, as here we're yet to read anything from this file. And during the for loop, we will simply be reading and storing one line in memory at each iteration. So not only can we save a ton of memory using this approach, but it becomes possible to elegantly read even the largest of files out there on our modest machines without ever worrying of running out of memory. Now would be a good time to bring to your attention some important considerations to keep in mind when choosing to utilize generators in your code. First off, here we were able to use generators due to the assumption that our processing of each line is completely independent of other lines, meaning that there is no logic that requires me to simultaneously have access to multiple lines at once. If that was the case, then we would have been forced to load everything in memory and access multiple lines by index. Secondly, generators can only be consumed once. For instance, if we try to loop over our lines generator once more, we won't be able to, which is verified by the absence of this print in the output. This is because all data has already been consumed from this generator. Don't forget that generators are basically an ongoing code that generates a sequence, and this code can never go back to a previous state, a code can only execute and move forward. So in this example, if we really need to loop twice over our lines, we'll have to create a new generator and loop over that, which will once again read the file one line at a time and yield them. And here comes the decision that you, the developer, has to make. If you want to loop only once over a sequence, then using a generator is usually a better option. 
But if you want to loop multiple times over a sequence, then it becomes a question of balance and preference. From one side, using generators will surely save you a lot of memory space and might even be your only option if you're reading very large files. But on the other hand, this will lead to opening and reading the file multiple times, which could lead to worse performance in terms of processing time. Whereas if you read the file in one go and store all lines in a list, sure you would be using much more memory, but looping multiple times over the lines will become much faster. So I would personally recommend doing that for small sequences that don't affect your memory consumption by much. Oh and by the way, if you have a generator at hand and you want to convert that to a list, it's as simple as just casting it to a list like so. This will effectively loop and gather all yields from the generator and save all of that in a list. Keep in mind that this will surely negate any benefits from using a generator in the first place as it will store all elements in memory, but will enable you to loop multiple times over the sequence as well as doing so much faster. Generators are so powerful and Yield still has many features we haven't covered yet. But before wrapping up this video, I want to mention one last very cool thing you can utilize when defining generators. We've seen the default way of defining generators which is basically a function having a Yield statement. Did you know that there's a feature in Python called Generator Expressions that allows you to define simple generators in a single line of code? Say we have a list of 5 floats, and we'd like to convert all these numbers to integers before printing them. Well, you might be familiar with the list comprehension feature that allows you to do the following. int nums equal to between square brackets int of num for num in nums. Then we will loop over the int nums list and print the elements out. Now for the cool part, did you know that by simply swapping the square brackets with parentheses, you'll be effectively defining a generator expression, which will basically yield each expression instead of creating a completely new list in memory containing all integers. And here's the same result while using practically no additional memory space. If you want to learn more about list comprehensions in Python, which by the way, is one of the most beloved features in Python, then definitely click on the video to your left. And as always, don't forget to like if you want to learn even more Python. <laughs>